guys, welcome back. So starting off right where we left last week with some bars added into the chassis. So you can see it's starting to come together. But get ready because we're getting ready to add a lot more and it's really getting ready to start coming together. But first, I have to show you a package that came today. Okay, so unboxing from Deechworks. So Deechworks makes all kinds of components for fuel systems, but what we have here is three sets of 2200cc injectors. So I have to show you the plan after we get this unboxed and why we're doing three sets. Some air fresheners, first of all. But here is, oh no, I need a razor blade. I need a razor blade. I knew how to razor blade. Okay, pause. Let me find a razor blade. Okay. Okay. So Deech Works is actually really close. They are in Oklahoma City. So here we have the flow report for this actual set of injectors. Pretty good information to have. Stickers. And then here we've got... So this is all the wiring. I haven't opened these yet. You guys gotta work with me. Okay, here are the actual injectors themselves. So there'll be two per cylinder and then eight will go right under the elbow. So that's something we'll have to adapt. Let's go ahead and open up the package. So the old style injectors we had in the Camaro and in the Nova that's in there currently are from Holly, they are an EV1 style Bosch injector. So these are an EV14 style short injector. So you can see here, this just has a billet adapter on the top. So you can see it's a short little injector with a billet adapter to be compatible with the fuel rails and intake that we have currently. So stick that back on, it's got a clip here. And then here are the pigtails. So. That'll plug onto here, and then we'll wire these into our injector wires. So three sets of injectors, one, two, and three. So I know, I know that it's going to be in the comments. Why don't you just go with one big set of injectors? So Deech Works, the biggest injector they currently have is 2200 cc's, which works for the application when you actually think about it, because this car will be street driven. So take one big set, which we technically need to support it, and then you have that same big set of injectors idling and cruising. It's just not optimal. So technically, if we're going to run one big set, we need another set anyways. Add the third set in under the elbow, and that's going to act kind of like an intercooler cool fuel. We will no longer have an intercooler. We're going to be on methanol. Not necessary. But anyways, that it all works out. I know there'll be the why, why three, why three, but it works for the application. And it's actually really exciting how well it's going to work. Another neat point. So you can see that that number on the injector says 00260. So each set of injectors comes with a flow report and the actual injector number is labeled. So that's injector, I'm trying to get to focus, 260. So you can see it here. So you can actually see what each injector itself flowed. And so it's got all of the different information and what they flow at these different points. So see how we have two injectors per cylinder. So it'd be one, two per cylinder, and then we're gonna build a plate that'll go under here and then the injectors will go in the side of that. So we will have a total of eight times three is 24, 24 injectors. So that'll be, mom's laughing at my mask. <laughs> it's kind of funny sometimes. I was videoing, I had too many things to think about. So it's been kind of hard to show the chassis up until now because trying to explain what you see here rather than just showing it is a feat. So this is a good starting point so that way we can show you what goes back from this point and what goes forward from this point. So I'm going to have dad talk about what's going on and, and where we stand as of now and then kind of the next steps. Well, the next step is going to be the upper rear frame rails from those from this point here back to here so they'll come out curve down and then this will get axed 
That'll probably be pretty quick after that. There'll be lots of Xing in here. This will get X, this square that's here, it'll get X vertically. And then we'll put some bars in. There's gonna be lots of bars. This is really just a start, but it's gonna, they're gonna come kind of like this. And the reason it's got so many bars, one, it's all there is. This is the whole structure for this kind of a car. But there'll be a, right underneath here, there'll be a big sway bar, two inch diameter splined sway bar. It'll point back and the links will go down to the rear end housing. So when you launch this car, all that twisting motion is gonna be transferred into this frame. So if there wasn't this transferring the energy up here, which will go across the roof, you know, and down to the front, everything will be tied together. It would it'd literally just twist, crack and break. So, you know, you gotta factor in all the different twists, the wheelies, the, you know, coming down out of a wheelie. Yeah. So, but launching is a hard, hard deal on, on a tube frame like this. So. Real quick, just take a couple steps back for anyone that might not be familiar with the tube chassis. So there is, this is gonna be a double frame rail chassis. So explain, just show real quick the point, the basic points for anyone who might not know when we refer to top and lower, back and front, where those points start and what they they are. So well, there, this is, once we get this back established, there'll be an upper and a lower frame rail. This is what I'm calling the lower frame rail because it goes back. It's the bottom one. This is the one the shocks will hook in, sway bar will be on, even though it comes to the upper here but it's gonna transfer down here and the main frame rail in the car will, will be right here. It'll go forward right beside the motor and out the front. That's what the lower control arms hook to. You know, that's what you would call the frame in the car. The upper frame rail or the double frame rail will come out of here and it'll go down to right in here. There'll be a hoop over this transmission. So it'll be two frame rails stacked on top of each other. This will all tie together, you know, and it'll have the reason we've got double bars here, which is something we need to point out. It looks kind of odd. It's not typical. There'll be a four link bracket right here. We're trying to keep our four links to around 22 inches, which is once you put the brackets on there and the brackets on the rear end, that bar center to center will be about 22 inches. We didn't want our roll cage back in the back seat like so many cars. You gotta, most cars that are built like this literally drive from the back seat. My you know? pedals would be about here. Yeah, you're, literally, your <laughs> pedals would be here. So we scooted our roll cage forward more like a traditional car, kind of like my gasser. But when you have a four link, that you, can't, you don't want a 30 inch long bar. So this is basically doubled, but it doesn't hurt anything. It actually helps. It's kind of cool because it's, this, you know, this is an angle bar, angled, the, the lower frame rail is actually on the top, but it'll be transferred down to the bottom and through. So, you know, there's lots of X bracing and things, but this will be a shelf back here. And I think we're talking about making like a little compartment, maybe a couple inch recess. So when you're sitting in your seat, you can throw your cell phone and your cigarettes and your beer lids and... <laughs> It's not going to be All that stuff. So also, just in case you're not familiar with the process, there are, as we showed in kind of the last video, there are certain bars that are, are required with certain size tubing. And then part of it is up to designer discretion for strength purposes and actual chassis working purposes. So that's why it's not all like a one size fits all. It's per car, per build, per person. So part of it is mandatory and set, and then part of it is a little bit of leniency. So On a 25-1 chassis, you can go 6-0. And, and NHRA or SFI doesn't care about anything from this hoop back there. It doesn't matter to them, but it's only good to 2,800 pounds. Hopefully we come in that, but if we weigh 3,000 pounds, a 25-1 won't work for this car. So we're building by 25-3 specs, which requires more bars, and NHRA does care about this bar. It's got to be X, you know, different sizes for different applications, have to depend on how you do it. But so we have to worry about this bar and, you know, and the lower a couple things up here. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. You don't have to have a brown tube frame, you know, like 
on right. our cars or my car, I have mm -hmm. stock frame rails. Mm -hmm. So, it, you, but you got to tie this bar to the lower right. rail. So that's that. Just recapping your points. You've got the main hoop. So that's what we talk about there. And then the lower, which will go from here forward. And then the upper, which you will see shortly. So just a couple points if you're not familiar with it for those that are familiar with it you already know but if you're not that way as we move forward you'll know what we're talking about building the hardest job in the shop is finding parts when you are building a car you don't just get to unless you're doing production where it's just the same thing over and over you're sourcing and looking at parts that have to fit the build mom has the worst job in the shop i tried doing tonight because we were looking up chrome and there for this, there's Bel Air, there's 210, there's what's the other there's one? There's Nomads, there's Nomads, Dan, Hardtop, Convertible, and none of it works together, and there's not anything that just is a kit. So, um, and, it, and it started over on this. This is the beginning. Yeah, so of this it. is the original. So, we have a list built in. Can you go to the eight, the summit cart? So, scroll up. So, this is just part of the list, but Summit has so much stuff. <laughs> they have everything almost that we need. So we've got tons of stuff. We've already got stuff ordered. We've got struts ordered. We've got seats ordered. And what else did we get ordered already? Um, struts, seats, and oh, uh, rack and pinion. And then all of the rest of this we have to order. Just Mom is going to have a fun call with summit because she has like she, i don't know how many days she's got into this at this point um days worth of looking mm -hmm. stuff up here's more stuff so this is from dan chuck so this is just a side note of everything but anyways so yeah she'll be calling summit within the next couple days and going through and ordering all of these different pieces luckily they have so much of the stuff available so <sighs> but it's a lot of work so as you're Having a car built, take into consideration finding parts. That That is a job, and it is not an easy one. Right. <laughs> parts on parts on parts. So Whoa. FedEx is here. I know from tracking information that this is an exciting shipment today. Can you guys guess what it is? Okay, just a second, and I'll show you. Even if Mika is excited, let's see. Parts day is always the fun part, right? Yeah, when stuff comes. I know. So I'm gonna take you guys along because this is promise it's exciting. Sneak, sneak, <laughs> hit, hit. Precision. Okay, don't care about that one. There's 
two in here. Where are they? Where are they? Oh, that one. Okay, awesome. That's not. Oh, okay. What's the number? On it's, I think box? it's. Uh, oh, right it's here. 6089. I think it's these two right here. Yep, that's those yes, two. Yes, it is. Yay! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go take these, come back and get okay. those. Okay, so I gotta get the boxes, but you know now, it's a precision shipment. So sit this box down, get two new boxes, and then we're gonna unbox, because that's. I'm excited to see what's in there. Smoke. All right, clamps. I'm saving the best for last, guys. You're, we're waiting. You gotta see, see what's in there. You can tell by the box size, though, that those are not small turbos. That's a big, heavy box. Okay, so clamps, drains, drains. Okay, let's open. Let's open the good stuff now. You gonna open these bad boys? Yeah, open that up. I like that it's nondescript box. I've had some stuff disappear. Da -da -da -da. Oh. Da -da -da -da. And another one. That's. I don't know if I've got the stuff to lift that. Okay, can you kick that out of the way? Okay. No idea how. Yeah, I don't know how to open it. This is unpacking for oh, you guys. Oh, look at that. Ooh. This looks so like. That makes it SFI certified. This is going to make your Honda fast. I don't have a Honda. Okay. Oh. Bam! Bam! Here they are. These are the Precision Gen 2 XPR Pro Mod Turbos. So, do a quick walk around real quick so you can see give you a little bit more information so sent the engine specs from the nova because that's the engine that will be going in the 55 so sent those to them and they came up with a match to meet that and meet our power goals and goals overall for this year so this is a combination that they came up with um, these are incredibly incredibly nice pieces so walking through so this is what makes it sfi certified coming down we have the stainless housing with a billet center section uh, the Taylor safety blanket, and then your speed sensor here. Walking around. Lots to come from that. We actually were planning on using the exhaust on this car. Not all the way back, but at least the downpipes and everything there. Headers, but we're actually switching on the 55. So rather than having the turbos at the front like you see on the Nova, which was done for space purposes, these turbos will go like you would see traditionally mounted down low down there with just exhaust out the side so it's out of the car so that's what we'll be doing with these like i said lots will come from this this is just the unboxing I had to share with you guys so hope you enjoy because these are key components that we're really really excited to be running I like, I like, I thought they were going to be here yesterday. So uh, we actually were in Texas yesterday. So he waited all day on FedEx to deliver them. And then, so what you went to Texas for? Oh yes. Went to Texas to get a third member from Jake, Jake's performance, picked it up. He had it. So courtesy of Jake, this is for the 55 because doing a new rear end in it too. Yeah, look at the light and spool. So it's got the light and spool. Look at the size of the axle. 40 spline, same as mine. Same as yours, for that matter. But the bolt through case, the pro gear. So it's got the 35 spline pinion. The good stuff. So, got that yesterday. And then today, turbos. I see sixes. I see sixes. Okay, quick check in here. So as you can see, got the funny car cage hoop and those bars in and got some other bars you can see so this bar those bars that bar over there these have all been added so getting closer to the back being completed but there's still like bracing and stuff that we're working on right now so right now working on a w that will go in between this to box that in so lots of Cutting, fitting, repeat, cut, fit, repeat, cut, fit, repeat. Don't forget that thing.
these time lapses, you see some of the repetitivity of each bar. So you don't just get to cut the bar, notch it, and put it in. You have to cut the bar, not cut it too short. So you usually cut it a little bit long, and then you go fit the notch, see how much you need to take off, go back, notch it again, come back, repeat the process again and again and again. So you are literally walking in circles all day um, with the same bar. So it's not just a cut fit. It's a cut fit, 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 then welded. We have the most helpful crew over here. We're helping, huh? Hey, whatever's needed. Medical. <laughs> We're the medical crew. <laughs> Alan did go get band-aids. I, I, I did lunch. We did lunch. This is lunch crew. We did have burgers. Grilled. Mm-hmm. You look so enthused. I'm thrilled. <laughs> Believable, almost. Quick update, so this is about one week into cage. Here is what we added yesterday. So this W looking bar, that W, that W, and then today I'm going to be finishing up the back half here, doing, so trailer, hitch, parachute mount here, and then just did these two bars this morning. And then we're going to be Xing here today Xing here today and then doing some lattice up and down here and then this should be pretty close to done don't forget the most important part right? <laughs> okay sunshine? dad's working on a fire so we can have burgers again today mom is about to come to the shop grill some burgers because it's warm in arkansas and sunny and nice and then um in the real news working on a pattern to go here so he can make a like a bracket to go here. So I'm getting ready to cut bars for the X. Well he does that. of an X bar. So as you can see, you got the two pipes cut the same length. And then this one is, so you can see, laying on top, drawing marks. You've got one here, one here, so you can line it up and then cut and it up. Be the way everybody does That's it. why we're the, doing it. <laughs> the thing is, I like to, I want to know where it's X, because some people may not be as picky either. If I see a thousand, I don't know, thousand, if I see a 32nd of an inch, or if there is a 30 seconds wrong, I see it. It stands out like a sword bone. Like is finished up for now there'll be little tubing that'll go in later but for now it's done so this is what it looks like so if you're wondering why it's x'd at the top that is because there's going to be a gas tank that goes in here because streetcar so <laughs> gas tank go in here be around 24 ish gallons so pretty big tank that'll go actually inside and then the filler neck will come up through here and there'll be a door on the trunk lid that'll go there so wrapping that up, looking at moving forward and establishing where the main frame rails will be. So doing that now and then getting ready to lift off the front cap. So going forward is exciting because that means the back has made lots of progress. What are you doing here? I'm trying to get the hood fit back to the cowl up there or just so I can get an approximate measurement. See, that's a little bit far forward. I think it's hitting that cowl panel. So we've decided to make the front end where it will tilt 
as well as liftoff. So there'll be some cool mechanism uh, working going on there with some ideas we have. So that'll be for a later date. But that way at the gas station, you can tilt it forward without having to lift it off a one person job versus at the track, actually be able to lift it off and be able to work on it easier. <clears throat> Hopefully we don't have to do too much of that, but in the event of. Literally one inch. Can't get in there to it. I'm gonna carefully move this Jenga block. That's what it is. It's Jenga for cars. Is that one inch? Yeah, yeah. like almost exactly. Yeah. So from this point right here, it'll be one inch forward, which is pretty much where I got my mark. That was a guess mark. I'm gonna call that front of, that's the front. So whatever we do, because the bumper's gonna come back over the top of that some. And I haven't had a bumper on 55 in so long, I forget what they look like. <laughs> we so, may have to get one, pictures of the black car at the house. So this is establishing how far forward the frame rails. And how high off of the floor. This is actual ground where the car will be sitting like the, so that square is 12 inches. So the front of that car is just about 12 and a half inches up. So the bumper will come down here. I don't know, we'll probably be half of that with a bumper. I'm sure a bumper is about six, seven inches. So it won't have much room under it. No, it's gonna be we low. We'll be putting a spoiler under it probably. <laughs> it's gonna be low, boy. Yep, I'm gonna go say 12.5 up. As you saw yesterday, I got this finished up back here. Well, semi-finished up. But today is back to ordering parts. So we are ordering a carbon fiber drive shaft from QA1. I'm gonna go through and show you quickly how I took the measurements and kind of the process. So these are the order forms. The cool part about the QA1 drive shaft is it's actually spun, the carbon is actually spun to be kind of a tuning element for the car, so to say. So it's purpose built for your application. So there's a couple different ways you can take measurements. Uh, if you have a drive shaft already, of course you can measure off that. Or we're doing the transmission tail housing to the yoke. So you got it set up. So what I'm doing is, and because it's really not a car, <laughs> you know, it's on a kind of a cheap jig here. I'm setting the wheel just visually where we like it best centered in the in the wheel opening it's kind of funny because there's really nothing to measure there you know you could measure here to here divide it in half and get a center line but when you do it doesn't look right so we're visually placing the wheel where we think it looks right and that's perfect right there so i've got a just a stock ford housing in there right now that's just for basic clearances when we're building this chassis and it's not in the center where it should be. It's three quarters of an inch too far back. So the also there'll be a motor plate that's a quarter inch thick that'll scoot the transmission back a quarter. Well, three quarters and a quarter is one inch. So we take our measurements from the, from the yoke that's on the rear end to the tail shaft. And when you go center of that drive shaft or that yoke rather, that yoke, a U joint cap, which is the front of that yoke, that's 50 inches. Well, we know we're gonna scoot the rear end forward three quarters and the, mo the transmission back a quarter. So that measurement then is 49 and to the actual housing is another half inch. So one of our measurements is 49 and one of them is 49 and a half. It'll give us the exact drive shaft length. And of course we got a little bit of wiggle room with our four length back here. We shouldn't need it. Now, that way we can get the measurements for QA1 and get those sent so that way they can start on the carbon fiber drive shaft, which hopefully at some point I will be able to make it up to QA1 and actually show you guys the process of spinning the drive shaft and the technology and everything that goes behind it. So it's pretty exciting. Um, I actually saw on David Freiberger's post, I haven't heard this Reddit research myself, but on his post, they said that they are so precise in their balancing that they actually use the sticker placement as the final balance on it, which that's crazy. That's cool. Yeah, it'll <laughs> so. be better than my farm truck drive shaft in <laughs> Retro Nova where you feel like going, vroom, vroom, vroom. <laughs> Yeah, so 
That's exciting. And it's SFI certified. This this particular one will be SFI certified. Wind, so wind, wind. We'll put a max speed wind. of you know, over 200 miles an hour on this one. Holy progress, a moly. Look at that. That looks like a step away from the 55, from the Nomad. That looks like, like it's coming in, it's turning into something. So discussed last night, these bar replacements and stuff like this. I can't get it all on video because I get here and you've already done yeah. a ton of stuff. I don't have time to waste on you. <laughs> happening so i last night got the frame rails there's a slight bend going on here you can see so got those and then discussed this placement and everything but got that done this morning so i'd say that's making a big difference that's some progress it's nice because now you can see how the floor is going to literally be flat but raised up two inches at the same time there's four and five eighths or something like that inches underneath the tubes yeah, to the bottom of the rocker there. panels so, so the car is way up off the ground. If you ever decide to turn it into a grocery getter, <laughs> you got lots of room under there for exhaust mufflers. You can literally hang giant mufflers under there and not even see them. Yeah, no issues there. So you can kind of see the basic shape. Getting this, then they'll be bracing in here, which you'll be seeing soon. And then hopefully soon there should be some struts delivering from, we ordered them from Summit. So those should be delivering soon so that way you can move forward at a continuous pace there but uh tonight working on mid plate over here so you want to come talk about this so i am notching it i just drilled measure i pulled the transmission back used the square to measure up from the frame rails to the center of the dowel pin hole so i've got these holes drilled and reamed i'm going to cut them out and down and across we don't have a full circle bell housing so this down here it's just bracket material now. <laughs> expensive, nice bracket material. Yeah, expensive, nice bracket material. So getting ready to cut that, and then he'll be putting a hoop around yeah. it. So well, I'll leave it square for the time being, bolted up, sandwiched between the motor and transmission. It'll stick up, and then I'll bend the hoop to go over it and drill and put tubes in the hoop that'll bolt to the mid plate. So all of the, the dash bar will be up there, and then there'll be bars coming off of this to the dash bar. This is what's literally gonna hold the motor up. This is the rear motor mount that'll come from the dash bar and from the down tubes and from the main frame rail. So that's the rear plate. The front plate you don't have yet. I mean, there's nothing to hook it to, but it'll hook to the bars coming down from the struts to the lower frame rails.
always a good day when parts show up. So lots of different products from lots of different companies because part one or part two of part one order from Summit came in. So lots more boxes will be showing up, but there is already a lot here. So I haven't actually got to go through and see what's in here, but getting ready to do that now. But I had to share because it's always a good day when parts make it. Quick overview of what all is here. UPS actually showed up right after, so there's even more stuff. So let me go through. So here is 12 stainless U-bins for new headers for the 55 with four inch pipe for downpipe. We have two Stroud chutes. They're going to be bright yellow. Kind of excited about that. We have a front plate, two new small fans for the radiator that's on the way, a pair of Simpson five point seat belts, two new billet caps for the fuel cells, two CO2 bottles, a new MSD starter, steering wheel, alternator, Dan Chuck pieces for some chrome that'll be here later, and then a painless fuse block. So lots of stuff here, lots of stuff still to come though. Try to remember where I left off, but took the weekend off to take a mental break from cars. So getting back on it today, going to try to get this inside portion finished up within the next couple days so that way we can move forward when struts and stuff make it here so stuff that you guys have not seen so inner and outer frame rails we have this bar we've got the mid plate in with the tube and then there'll be one more bar come from here out so got that part in dash bar in down bars on the inside in. So now getting ready to do funny car cage. So dad's gonna say, talk about what we're getting ready to do there. So mocking it up, it's gonna have lots of bins, gonna be semi-complex. So we're also working around the double frame rail, so the upper frame rail. So show us what you're doing. This will kind of go up here, it'll come down. We're trying to decide where we're gonna tie it in here. The problem we have is that we really like our upper frame rails to be tied right into here, go forward. So I think we're going to take this bar in like this, come up across into here. And then there'll be an outer bar that'll come down to our door X bar. So it's part of what we're talking about is this, it won't be symmetrical with the rear part of the funny car cage, but it becomes really narrow and becomes kind of a problem with a little bit bigger seat. Um, we're still kind of deciding on that. I don't that. think I've seen any one that's symmetrical. I mean, it's something that you want to do, but you see them that are, they're, they're winged way out. I mean, almost nobody. It's something you don't pay attention to, but if you make this, literally bring this cage forward, you're sitting really, really tight confined. in there. When you got your helmet on, and on a street car, you can really get your head into that. Yeah. So, so. You know, if you had a side impact, it would kill you. That's not, not a good thing. So no. that's the next plan. Moving forward. for this video the chassis has come a long way since you guys saw the car when it was sitting in the paint booth a couple weeks ago because there was no chassis at that point so keep in mind editing I'm getting there but there is like 10 12 there's like two weeks worth of work for this one video so lots of I mean not every day but you know what I'm saying there's lots of time put into this video so got to start rolling at a fast pace now so next week we'll be picking up getting ready to cut the bars with the measurements on my hand. So that'll be where you see next, next week. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, be happy, go fast, and stay pretty. I will see you guys next time.